Welcome to Springfield, Virginia. Today we're going to show you the best places for recreation and shopping in Springfield. Hi, I'm James Nellis with Moving to Washington, D.C. Like and subscribe today. At Springfield Town Center, that's right, right in the heart of Springfield is the Springfield Town Center, just outside the mixing bowl. This is a huge attractor for residents and people in the general area. And of course, one of the big attractions is this big giraffe. This is part of the full immersion, the Lego Discovery Center, where you can truly interact with the Legos, see a 4D cinema, there's even an imagination train. This is the place you wanna come. If you have small kids or you're babysitting for the weekend, it's a great interactive and immersive place to enjoy Legos. Beyond that, it's cuisine. Maggiano's, Chewy's, Yard House. People come here to experience food. Not only that, but also the Regal Cinemas, and we'll show you that and highlight it. And if you are a kid at heart, and maybe you're an adult, Dave & Buster's is also connected here at the Springfield Town Center. Don't worry if you love to shop. If you love to shop, there's a Nordstrom Rack, a Target, Everything here is on campus, from jewelry to merchandise to even clothing. You can find it all right here at the Springfield Town Center. Regal Cinemas 12, that's right, 12 different opportunities to see the right movie at the right time. One big attraction to Springfield Town Center is the movies. Why? Because they have full reclining seats. That's right, overstuffed recliners where <laughs> hopefully you don't fall asleep, but an amazing way. and tables that come out over the recliner so it's really an epic experience where you get full screen viewing, Dolby surround sound and the ability to just sit back, relax and watch your favorite movie. Make sure when you're coming to Springfield that you check out not only the Springfield Town Center but check out a movie. Dick Sporting Goods, one of the great features here in Springfield Town Center where you can get equipped for every sport or desire that you have, anything from football to cross country, track and field, lacrosse, and even soccer. You, they have it all in here for the adults and the youth leagues. This is the place you want to go, and typically there's always a sale. Here at the Springfield Town Center, they have another surprise for you. That's right, for your electrical vehicle, your EV charging stations. The best thing you can do is show up here at one of the Tesla charging stations, plug in, and then go and shop, dine, even see a movie and get fully charged for the rest of your adventure in the electric world. So right across and under the overpass, coming from Springfield Town Center, um, we're on Frontier, and over to the right is going to be Lewis High School. Uh, now, you see all the school buses here. Um, one of the things to consider in Springfield is where you want to live. Now, this is one of the more economical areas. You might call it too good to be true. The pricing for these single family homes, a lot of them are modular construction, uh, is actually going to be equivalent uh, or even sometimes less than uh, a townhouse. So the attraction is there is no homeowners association, uh, no HOA, and so then therefore you can actually do what you want with the house and you don't have to worry about um, what your neighbor does. You can paint your house pink, you can see all these different colors. You can do additions to the homes. Uh, there is some value to that. Uh, this area has struggled though with appreciation um, versus some of the other townhouse communities that would be equivalent in pricing. Uh, so this is the community you'd want to be in, Frontier Estates, if you said, you know what, I want a single family home, no HOA, and I want close proximity uh, to the mixing bowl. And you can see the typical construction is Ramblers. There's some split levels. Now we're going to take you from this area in Springfield and we're going to actually show you some other communities and areas in Springfield that have done better for appreciation over the years. 
and and what that looks like. Now the challenge with this section is, and the reason it's struggled for resale is because of the close proximity to that same beltway, to the mixing bowl, where you get the noise. So they are actually dealing with the noise from all of the traffic. You can see it over there, see where they have the sound on the right hand side, you can see the sound walls. <laughs> well anytime they're putting a sound wall up for your community, uh, that's not a good thing. You can see it right over there, that huge construction, that sound wall helps try to minimize and buffer uh, the loud sounds that you will hear. So Commerce Street takes you, kind of cuts you across, cuts you through that mixing bowl area and there's some actually hidden gems, some fun restaurants that not everyone knows about, especially if you're new to the area. Um, one example of that is a Mexican restaurant called El Paso. Now El Paso uh, is known for its street tacos, Mexican street tacos, and it has a huge following. I mean, if you're talking about trying to get a table on a Friday or Saturday night, it is crazy. We, we've done uh, real estate lunches with, with our agents and staff before. It's really a fun atmosphere, um, and you can get fajitas, you can get margaritas, whatever it is, and you would drive, you wouldn't even know about it uh, if you got off the mixing bowl because it's off of Commerce, which is kind of a back street that just cuts you through parts of Springfield. So there is a famous chain. You'll see over here on the right-hand side, Best Buns, and over on the left, you'll see this big brick building. This is Mike's American Grill. It's part of the Great American Restaurant chain. And if you're a local to Northern Virginia and the, and the Beltway, you love Mike's American Grill and the Great American Restaurant chain from Sweetwater Tavern, Coastal Flats, Carlisle, you name it, a host of different restaurants. And what's amazing is, of course, if you know, it's their Aussie rolls. The Aussie rolls are decadent. It's almost like fried donuts that they give you for bread with a honey butter spread. That alone is why many people come to Springfield just to go to Mike's American Grill. There's only one of them, uh, but it is part of that chain. As we go through this section of Springfield, this again attends Lewis High School, uh, and we're gonna be going from essentially East Springfield, which is what this area is and, and Frontier Estates that we drove you through, into North Springfield. Now the distinction there is we're gonna go from Lewis High School into Annandale High School. Uh, now neither of them, if you look at school reports, neither of them rank at the highest level. As a result of that, housing prices are actually lower than other parts of Springfield and we're taking you essentially from the cheapest pricing in Springfield to the highest pricing when it goes for communities, areas to live, and styles and designs of homes. Uh, a lot of Springfield was built from the 1950s up and so you're going to see that more of that all brick construction that doesn't happen today uh, but they're fairly modest uh, brick ramblers, split levels. Uh, you'll also see, of course, additions that have been added, and usually those are added with vinyl siding or even aluminum, depending on uh, what year they were done. Springfield Plaza is the perfect location right off of 395 and the mixing bowl in Springfield on Old Keene Mill, and you've got access to Whole Foods, Bob and Edith's, you have local dining, including Malik's, which is a wonderful uh, restaurant that is family owned and opened all night. Uh, you have great options. Uh, you even have a party city. <laughs> Whenever I need to get balloons and I'm in Fairfax County, I'm going to go over to Party City and get the balloons before our birthday party and things like that. And um, it is a, a great location. Driving on Old Key Mill, we're about to run into the famous, the famous mixing bowl. What is that? That's where everything merges in. When you're thinking 95 North, 95 South, 495, 395. So every extreme intersection and major artery flows through here. Uh, and it's commonly known as uh, the mixing bowl. And, and as a result of that, we're going to actually put you on the mixing bowl. That's right. <laughs> so you can get an, a sense of what that really looks like and feels like. It is intimidating. 
if you're relocating and you have a newly licensed driver, <laughs> it's very intimidating. It's even intimidating for people that have had their license for a long time because all these roads coincide. Are you going northbound, eastbound, west? Like where, where should you be headed and what does it look like? Uh, two terms you should get used to right away is whether or not you're going 485 to Tyson's or 485 to Baltimore. Uh, see, you'll see the big divide here, Tyson's Corner, Baltimore, Washington, and you got all of these happening at the same time. Uh, we're, we're going to show you the aerial as well as, as you pop above it and you just see these uh, almost like shoelaces being tied together, right? That's why they call it a mixing bowl if you think of a bowl of spaghetti, right? When you're thinking about that and what it looks like, you can see all of the different lanes merging in. You really need to know, look at this, 385 North, 485 the divide is happens fast so you really need to know where you're headed where you're going and so on and off to the right you'll see 395 north that's going to take you right into washington dc of course 495 north is going to take you up to tyson's corner uh through the mosaic and everything else where uh where one of our offices is actually uh, now we've stayed on 495 and we're headed towards baltimore so this is going to take you from springfield into alexandria and then to the Woodrow Wilson Bridge, which over on the right-hand side, you would see National Harbor and all the statues that we've highlighted in another video. So if you're interested about National Harbor, definitely check out that video. Uh, you'll get a sense of really the infrastructure. You know, <laughs> this is funny. Years ago, Northern Virginia paid big money to bring in someone to figure out traffic. How do they eliminate it? What do they do with traffic? What does it look like? Uh, and after... I don't even know how much money they spent, but after hundreds of thousands of dollars, <laughs> they came back and just simply said, we have too much traffic. Like that's literally the answer was, we have too much traffic. Now you might be thinking about, well, what happened with COVID and all the telecommuting? I can tell you this, traffic is a lot better than it used to be because of the flexibility of so many people being able to telecommute. However, the traffic patterns themselves, it's, it's always gonna be traffic no matter what hour, no matter what time. Especially because you got to think about, we're driving through Springfield now and in Alexandria, and as you go 95 north and south, you're going. That's a major highway. You're going through multiple states. You could take it all the way up to New York, right? You could take it all the way down into the Carolinas and into Florida. So you know, think about these major arteries that all happen and coincide within Springfield. And then just before, as we're coming in from Alexandria, going into Springfield jumping into the mixing bowl you'll see here as uh, look at the overpasses you can see kind of the swirling uh, different arteries to jump back and forth to go northbound southbound and all of that we're riding underneath those and we're going to exit into springfield and when we go into springfield of course we can go into west we go west on old key mill uh, Old Key Mill and Franconia are basically the same street. It just depends on where you are within it. And Old Key Mill will take you to West Springfield, and then Franconia will take you to East Springfield. And we're going to also even show you North Springfield, which is uh, the greatest value of home uh, in today's market. So you can see here this the split and divide of Old Key Mill. Also, if you're uh, curious, uh, one of the reasons Springfield has done so well for many years is because it has a metro. It's got uh, a metro line, the Springfield metro line, which people and residents can actually take into the city. So in Springfield, there was kind of this dead zone, for lack of better terms, is where you had all this commercial complexes, not A space, but like C space, storage, warehouses, and they said, well, how do we make a better use of this space and place? Amazon uh, came in and they started having some of their basically holding fact uh, there. Uh, Amazon came in, had their holding factories, and then this came about, the St. James. The St. James is a pretty epic complex. And yes, I would call it a complex. It's not just a recreation center. I mean, it has everything. It has its own restaurants inside. Uh, it has daycare. You have, of course, workout facilities and anything you think of. It even has a uh, full football complex, volleyball, basketball, anything you could imagine 
Uh, they even host tournaments here. The St. James is a full all-in-one, and we'll show you the immensity uh, of the size of this and how far back it goes. Uh, this has become quintessential to uh, adult and youth leagues. Uh, and, and look at the space and the size of everything that you can do here at the St. James. Again, they're gonna, they host multiple tournaments. You can see all of the discarded goals <laughs> from coming in and out of the complexes. Uh, indoor lacrosse, indoor soccer. Uh, these are huge facilities. As you, can, as you can see, there's essentially barn doors on all of them. Uh, this has come in and kind of in a, in a positive way, you could say it, <laughs> it pushed out all the mom and pops. I mean, the St. James is a huge complex and you will have people that drive here from other states to Springfield just to be at the St. James. You'll also have people that drive here to work out in these amazing facilities. Of course, you have yoga here. Anything you can imagine or want for recreation or exercise you can find here at the St. James. Now, as I said, this, this commercial park, this area was a little bit of a dead zone. You're gonna see all these trucks and big rigs, storage facilities and, and everything else. So much commercial that they even call it commercial drive. <laughs> We're driving on industrial drive and there's commercial drive and just beyond is a 395. I personally play adult recreation volleyball. Uh, they do have it at the St. James. Uh, I actually play at a place they call the, the Fairfax Sportsplex, which funny enough, they call it Fairfax Sportsplex, but it's actually here in Springfield. When they say Fairfax, they're getting by with that because it's Fairfax County. And it looks like we're gonna have to turn around and go in a different way. Yep. Some of the excitement that you get on film day. Uh, <laughs> title boxing is a big, a lot of our clients will go to title boxing right there where they have kickboxing and real boxing lessons at, at title boxing. We're gonna show you the other way to get in onto commercial drive. St. James again here over on the left hand side. This is definitely a hidden pocket that most people don't even know about. Um, and where we got cut off back there, that's the Amazon facilities are, are over there for, for storage. So this is the other side of Commercial Drive. Along with warehouses for business, you of course have self-storage facilities. There are consistently uh, these big rig vehicles, of course, these big trucks that are taking, taking big hauls across the country and from one location to the next. And then uh, you'll see, of course, the Amazon facilities on the right hand side. And then on the left, we went from the big St. James to this small facility, or at least now it looks like a false small facility of the Fairfax Sportsplex, which has been around for decades and is known for indoor soccer, indoor volleyball, uh, for youth and adult recreation. And it has been here for years. Uh, it's kind of the quintessential um, cheaper fees uh, the resources, of course, are not as vast as the St. James, uh, but it does well from an economic model and just pouring people through. And so even within this big commercial space, you have two large recreation centers, both for adults and for children. So we're in Springfield, we're driving on Backlick Road. 
So Old Key Mill and Franconia Road, we mentioned that before when we were getting off of the mixing bowl. We're now on Backlick Road, uh, which traverses through many different communities. Uh, and of course it has some commercial, uh, it's got doctor's offices, everything else. You'll see up here Edsel Road. Edsel cuts right into 395. And back beyond that is the commercial complexes that uh, we just drove through and around. And up on the right hand side, you're going to see two of the larger churches in the area, Word of Life and then Emmanuel Bible Church. Of course, it's kind of a little bit eerie that next to most churches, there's also a funeral home. So you'll see the main funeral home over on the left hand side. Uh, makes sense. Life and death, they go together. Um, and again, I mentioned I grew up in Fairfax County. Uh, actually, the church that I attend is Emmanuel Bible Church. It's right up here on the corner of Backlick and Braddock Road. Uh, it is a large complex, uh, and they actually have a full school and church on campus. And so on the right-hand side, you'll, you'll see uh, Word of Life, which has school and a church combined together. And then uh, there is actually a nursing home in between that uh, and Emmanuel Bible Church on the right-hand side. And that's actually uh, the church I grew up going to. Uh, it's a non-denominational church. It has uh, not only a church facility, but also a school on the same campus, an elementary school. And on a different campus, they actually have a local high school. Now, I'm going to drive you by it. So Springfield borders right along Alexandria. And there is a famous school in Springfield that it doesn't matter how close you live to it, you can't go to it. As a little trivia, maybe we should open up with that. The, the trivia, it's a magnet school. And over the last 20 years, it has been in the top three for the entire country. Drum roll. I think we're going to make you have to make you wait until we drive up to it of, of what that actually is. Uh, of course, here's the soccer and sporting facilities and fields for Emmanuel on the right hand side. And then up on the right, of course, Springfield does a great job with Fairfax County Parkland, and this is Deer Lick Park. It's got tennis courts, uh, walking trails, a great exercise and recreation area. So drum roll, it is science and technology school. No matter how close you live to it, you could be this home right here, you can't go to it. It's a magnet school that you have to test into, and it's Thomas Jefferson High School for science and technology. We're gonna pull in real quick so you can see the facility. Uh, but for the, over the last two decades, TJ, as they call it locally, TJ has actually been in the top three for the entire country for school, for, for education, for public education. Uh, as I said, it's a magnet school. You do have to test into it. It is ideal for those that have children that want to focus, of course, on science and on technology. You can see there, the sporting, I can't say this, uh, <laughs> this isn't overstepping. They're not known for their, their sports. <laughs> They're known for their academics. Uh, though they have had successful seasons, they've done well in general, uh, but they're, it's tough for them to compete against the larger high schools or the ones that can actually do more recruiting outside of academia. And you can see uh, here some of the fields that are part of TJ. And they even have their own tennis courts on campus, which is great. A lot, of, a lot of schools don't have their own tennis courts, so it's nice that they have them there on campus. And then borders right to it, you've got some townhouses, uh, one-car garage townhouses. Uh, typically for those, you're going to be in the $600,000 to seven price point. And now we've taken the back way all the way here to Little River Turnpike, 
where, like I said, you are bordering uh, Annandale and Alexandria uh, as you get here. And now we're going on to Braddock Road. Braddock and Backlick create that intersection the, of where uh, the Emmanuel Bible Church is. And of course, what would be without a Home Depot? We have a Home Depot on our, on our left-hand side. So ease of shopping, uh, close proximity to everything here in Springfield. North Springfield is one of those communities within Springfield where you get the most money for what you're doing. Now, they are smaller. Typically, they were built between the 50s and 70s. And so some of the smaller Ramblers may only have three bedrooms and one or one and a half bathrooms. You can see also people fell in love with this location just outside of the Beltway because they'll stay here and then build on. They'll build up, they'll build out, create larger square footage so they can keep the same great location uh, when it comes to living in Springfield. Uh, you'll see kind of a quaint nature as you go through. There's not technically an HOA, but you'll see tire swings, you'll see split levels, ramblers, and again, you'll continue to see people that have built on. So if you're looking for the best price for a single family home and you wanna stay inside or close to the Beltway, North Springfield could be a win for you. So I wanna show you this little cul-de-sac and as a reminder, North Springfield does not have an HOA. So it's nice, you have no homeowners association. You do have split level designs. You have carports, garages that have been uh, closed off. The one challenge though is that with no HOA, people can park and do what they want. For instance, you can have a boat parked out in the middle of the street, which is completely uh, legal and it's okay with the local city ordinances. So understand that when you buy in an area that doesn't have an HOA or a specific community, then what your neighbors do, you cannot always control. So as we go out of North Springfield and you cross over Braddock Road, you go beyond the Beltway, you're still in Springfield. And the interesting thing about Braddock Road is Braddock Road actually divides Springfield and Annandale. So on the right-hand side, you have Annandale. On the left-hand side, as you're driving away from the city, you have Springfield. And tucked back within that portion of Springfield is actually Akatink Park. And we're gonna take a look up close and see why everyone gets so excited about the famous Akatink Park in the heart of Springfield. Lake Akatink Park, this is the park in Springfield that everyone comes for recreation and relaxation. 476 acres, this is a huge park. Behind me you can see the lake, that's right, Lake Akatink. We're standing on a trail. There are miles and miles of trails people use to walk, ride their bikes, full out recreation. Uh, beyond that, there's also a marina, mini golf, and even a carousel. That's right, you can get kayaks, go on the water, and really enjoy it. You'll even see people fishing. This truly is the place for recreation here in Springfield. Beyond the marina and the trails, you also have basketball courts, volleyball courts, and open play area, which really allows you to make full use of this county park. Make sure you come out and enjoy Akatink Park. Okay, we're now driving down Old Keene Mill. Now you have Braddock Road on the north side of Springfield. This is more the southern side of Springfield. And Old Keene Mill uh, takes you into West Springfield. So we're headed west away from the Springfield Town Center, away from the Mixing Bowl. On the right-hand side, you'll see one of the larger Catholic churches, especially in the Springfield area, St. Bernadette's. Uh, and it's amazing to see how many people come and go from St. Bernadette's. It is a church and a school. Uh, and on the left-hand side, you'll see an area called Daventry. Daventry is well known. It has uh, kind of a park and ride area for slugging. Uh, that's right, slugging. You probably haven't heard of it. Daventry on the left is a combination of single family condos and townhouses that does really well for resale uh, because of its proximity to the mixing bowl and the design and styles of homes. Um, speaking of that, we're going up here on the left hand side, kind of like North Springfield, you have the older Ramblers, split levels, uh, some split foyers on the left hand side. And along Jansen Drive, it actually backs to one of the premier golf courses in the area. That's right, Springfield 
has its own golf course and it's private and it's called the Springfield Golf and Country Club. So the Springfield Golf and Country Club uh, is a wonderful place right here in Springfield where it has its own championship uh, course and that is over 6,600 yards. It's a, a true 18 hole course. They also have tennis, exercise facilities. Uh, it is a, a wonderful community. The interesting thing the, about it is it's actually not a community. So the homes that line in around the golf course actually are not part of a quote unquote golf community. So um, you can see it from the road from Old Keene Mill. You can see the golf course and uh, it is lush greens. They do a fantastic job of, of keeping it championship ready uh, when you talk about golfing. Uh, I am not a member there, but I've loved playing in every golf tournament that I have come to here at Springfield Golf and Country Club. And so across from Springfield Golf and Country Club, uh, there's a community called Cardinal Forest. Now Cardinal Forest is larger than what you're going to see in North Springfield and East Springfield, and it's got a variety of styles. You have the Rambler style, you also have split foyers, split levels, colonials, uh, and in an ideal world, you would live actually off of a cul-de-sac. You can see here on our right-hand side, a cul-de-sac, which also has the larger colonial style homes. There is not a true homeowners association here, but it does have sidewalks that are lined within the streets. That's a perfect opportunity to be able to, to walk and jog and trails throughout. There's even a park, uh, Carly Park, within Cardinal Forest. <clears throat> Cardinal Forest, has also a combination of different home styles as well. Beyond the fee simple single family homes, there are townhouses and even condos. And another reason that these sell at a higher level, you'll see the park here that we're driving by that I just mentioned, Carly Parkway Park. And we are driving on, of course, <laughs> Carly Parkway. This park can also funnel back into Lake Akatink. So Springfield has done a great job within its infrastructure as they built it out of also having park and conservation area. You'll see the condo townhouses on our right hand side that are here part of Cardinal Forest. Now within this area, there's also a townhouse community called Charlestown. And Charlestown are all brick Georgetown style. They're on the left hand side and those are great it's a great townhouse community. You actually pay a, a fairly high HOA fee because they cover the roofs. <laughs> That's right. With Charlestown, this community, they actually pay for all of the exterior with the roof when that goes bad. And again, in the backyard, you have in the back you have parking, and you also have uh, that Georgetown style patio. So it's like a brick patio. You can see here on the left hand side. See how it has the brickwork for your fencing and your fence line. Uh, it's just a really fun vibe and part of the community. And we're gonna take Forrester Boulevard out. So we came in on Carly Park, we're gonna take Forrester Boulevard out to Rolling Road. So when you imagine Springfield, you've got Old Key Mill running to West Springfield. Then you have Rolling Road that connects back to Braddock Road that then funnels, remember how we said Braddock and Backlick uh, or Braddock splits Springfield and Annandale and you'll see how we cut through there. The reason that these homes sell higher for a higher price than, than North Springfield and East Springfield is because they actually go to West Springfield High School. Uh, now West Springfield High School is 9th through 12th grade. Uh, they have a separate junior high and uh, of course a separate elementary school. And behind West Springfield, you'll find Center Road. And along Center Road, there are multiple subdivisions that have been developed over the years. Now, as we've continued to go up in price point, what you're gonna find is, as an example, Red Fox Estates, the average price point is 1.2. That's right, over a million dollars in Springfield. So when you're thinking through maybe luxury, additional square footage, and more of the colonial style, that's when you want to think about Center Road right behind the high school. It's walkable to West Springfield High School and to grocery and shopping. 
all things Springfield. We started with the mixing bowl. We showed you north, east, and now west Springfield. And even there's additional communities along the parkway. Here's what you should know about Springfield. It's convenient, it has the right location, and you have multiple options when it comes to housing and recreation.